Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to be taking a look at what homeostasis actually is and negative and positive feedback. This is taken from the OCR specification for A-level biology 5.1.1 which is communication and homeostasis. So first of all we need to think about these two words the receptor and effector which did look at in the previous video but just to remind you a receptor is something that's going to detect a change within the body and an effector is something that brings about the change in the body and it's usually a muscle or a gland now this is the definition for homeostasis which you do need to learn it's in a red box because it's taken directly from the mark scheme and we need to know that homeostasis is maintaining a relatively stable internal environment or state within a narrow limit even though the environment is changing. So there are a couple of factors that we need to keep constant within our body. Um, we've got temperature, pH, blood glucose and water potential. They're the main ones that we need to keep within a certain range. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at each one as to why in a bit more detail. So for core body temperature, the main reason why we need to keep this uh, within a certain range is so that we have an optimum temperature for our enzymes. The key thing with this one is linking it to metabolic reactions such as aerobic respiration because we need aerobic respiration to generate ATP which is used for things like muscle contraction. Really, really important. Uh, pH again is for um, enzymes so they work and work at their optimum pH. Again, linking that into metabolic reactions and aerobic respiration is really, really important. The next one is glucose concentration. It has to be kept within a certain range. And again, this is because we need a decent level of it for aerobic respiration. As you can see in this formula, which you should know from GCSE, we use it in aerobic respiration to generate ATP, used for things like muscle contraction and active transport. If it's too low, this causes problems for us. But again, if it's too high as well, this can also cause problems. And it can also link into osmosis and uh, water potential of the blood, um, which we don't want to happen. We want an, an isotonic solution in our blood. Uh, we don't want it to too much sugar or too little sugar because that does impact upon our water potential of our blood. If you need to, go back and recap osmosis so that you understand this in a little bit more detail. So negative feedback. This is where um, an effect causes a change to bring about the your internal environment back to its normal conditions. So in this particular case at the top here, a receptor would detect an increase in this certain level, whether that be temperature or blood glucose or whatever. The effector then brings about the change and it brings it back down to that normal level. Equally the same on the other side. So the receptor would detect a decrease, effector would cause a change and bring it back to the normal level. So that's negative feedback. Positive feedback, this is where a situation is amplified until there's a change brought about. An example of this would be labour that precedes childbirth. And in this particular example, um, the head of the fetus pushes against the cervix, which causes um, nerve impulses to be sent to the brain. This brain, the brain then causes oxytocin to be released, and then the oxytocin in turn stimulates stronger contractions. And this will carry on going until the baby is born. So positive feedback is where I have this change here is amplified, whereas in neg negative feedback, the change was brought back to the normal level very, very quickly. So those are the differences between positive and negative feedback. And you also had your definition there for homeostasis. Guys, remember in your exam, do not use words, it, they, amount and size. Use good scientific terminology. It's going to get you as many marks as possible. And good luck with your exams.